Mashallah, we'll begin inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ma ba'd. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalam mutakurbala. Respected brothers and elders. And if there is any youngsters, uh, uh, there, there are some youngsters, yes, and beloved youngsters and respected sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum So, first of all, before we start our program, at the beginning, we will thank Allah Ta'ala for giving us the ability to sit in the halaqa of Quran. Say Alhamdulillah. 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 Sitting in the halaqa of Quran is a blessing. Sitting in the halaqa of Quran is a blessing from Allah Ta'ala. Sitting in the masjid is also a blessing. Because masjid is a house of Allah Ta'ala. Yes, listening to Quran Reading Quran, understanding Quran, learning Quran is all of these are blessings from Allah Ta'ala. So Allah has blessed us with, you know, we say, mustaqim. Allah has accepted our dua. If you are able to sit in the gathering of Quran and Sunnah, then remember Allah has accepted your dua. Okay, because every day in the prayer, what are you saying? What's the main dua in them? Main dua is Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. That's the main dua. In the Surah Fatiha, the main dua is Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. Yes, guide us to the right path. And if you are able to sit in the halaqa of Quran, Sunnah, Hadith, Sirah, Aqidah, Fiqh, these sort of halaqas are the hidayah. We look for hidayah, isn't it? But many of us, we don't know what is hidayah. Allah Ta'ala gives hidayah through the knowledge of deen. Am I right? Allah Ta'ala gives hidayah through the knowledge of deen. Because every time people needed hidayah, Allah Ta'ala sent a messenger. Am I right? right. Every time people needed hidayah, Allah Ta'ala sent a prophet. Every time Allah Ta'ala sent Hidayah, people needed Hidayah, Allah Ta'ala sent Hidayah, Allah Ta'ala sent Kitab, Tawrat, Zabur, Injil, Quran. <coughs> so from this, what do we understand? The Hidayah is in the teachings of the Anbiya. Hidayah is in the messengers. Hidayah is in the prophets. Hidayah is in, uh, in Anbiya alayhim salam. Hidayah is in Tawrat, Zabur, Injil and Quran. These books, they have Hidayah. Okay, now Quran has the Hidayah because other books are not accepted anymore. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ If Allah Ta'ala wants good for someone, then Allah Ta'ala gives him the knowledge of deen. May yurid illahu khayran yufaqihu fi deen. Remember the hadith. Please concentrate. I know it's a lot of noise in the background, but the noise will finish in two minutes, inshallah. Children will go home and noise will stop. So come closer. Let's sit closely and listen carefully, inshallah. We will have 45 minutes to one hour session. Let's take the most benefit from this session, inshallah. So hidayah comes from the Quran and Sunnah. That's the main moral of all of what I said. Hidayah comes from the teachings of messengers. That's the main moral. And if Allah Ta'ala wants to give someone Hidayah, He gives him the knowledge of Deen. May yurid illahu khayray, yufaqihu fi deen. If Allah wants good for someone, He gives him knowledge of Deen. Subhanallah. So now, 
we will say Alhamdulillah again from our heart because we understood that we are sitting in the halaqa of Hidayah. Say Alhamdulillah. May Allah Ta'ala accept us for Hidayah. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. So we spoke already about the topic of the tafsir, importance of tafsir. Importance of tafsir. So what is the importance of tafsir? What do we want to achieve by sitting in the halaqa of tafsir? We already spoke about it. The thing we want to achieve is hidayah. Right, Shaykh? We want to achieve the hidayah from Quran. That's why we sit in the halaqa. That's why before we start listening to the program, we will rectify our intention. Renew our intention. We will refresh our intention. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ your, your a'mal, your actions depends on your intention. Your action depends on your intention. Means if your intention is good, your action will benefit you. If your intention is bad, your action will not benefit you. So it's going to be waste. So before we sit down in the halaqa of Quran, everywhere we should renew our intention that we are sitting here to learn the book of Allah. We are sitting here to learn the book of Allah to please Allah. We are sitting here to learn the deen of Allah. This sort of intention we should have. And also, we are sitting here to learn something new so I can teach it to my home, my people, my children. This is also should be intention. If you just listen and you don't pass on, then you are not benefiting the Ummah. Are you with me? Yes. If you listen to the talk and you don't pass on to others, then you're not benefiting the Ummah. So importance of listening to the talk is that you pass it on to others. So if your wife is not here, whatever you learn, you go and share it with her. If your children are not here, you go home, share it with your children. This is what Sahaba used to do. And because of that, today we call Hadith is Hadith. Are you all with me? Yes. Why do we call Hadith is Hadith? Because it's been passed on. It's been passed on. Otherwise, imagine if they didn't pass on. They saw Rasulullah Sallallahu doing certain things. They saw senior Sahabas doing certain things. They didn't pass it on. Then wife wouldn't have said, I heard my husband saying this, that he heard Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said this. There are a lot of wives who say this. I heard my husband heard this, or my husband saw this. Or my dad saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi doing this. And my dad heard Rasulullah SAW doing this. Or Rasulullah SAW saying this. This is called hadith, isn't it? Hadith means narration. So today, our responsibility, whatever we learn, we have to narrate it. As best as possible. Without adding things in it. Without removing things from it. As best as possible, passing the message to others, inshallah. Are we all ready for this? May Allah accept us. So today's tafsir is start from ayah number 25. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa bashiri al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihati anna lahum jannatin tajrimin tahtiha al-anhaar. Kullama ruziqu minha min thamaratin rizqan qalu hadha al-lazhi ruziqna min qabl. وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ Allah Ta'ala says in this verse mentioning the gifts and presents and reward for the believers. He says, O Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا that inform the believers Inform the mu'minun. Inform those who believe in you and believe in me. Believe in my book and believe in your sunnah, your teachings. Inform them. 
And what? وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And those who do good deeds, inform them. What, what to inform them, we'll find out in a bit. But let's talk about Amanu. Amanu, those who believe. What do you mean by those who believe? There are a lot of people, they believe in a lot of different things. Here, those who believe mean those who believe in Allah. And those who believe in what else? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at that. As soon as you say shahada, la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. As soon as you say the shahada, everything Allah Ta'ala said, you have accepted it. You have accepted everything you have accepted. That whatever Allah Ta'ala has said, that's it. I will do it. That's what you just said by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. That I bear witness that there is no God other than Allah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. As soon as you said that, his Quran entire Quran become obligatory on you for you to respect it, follow it, read it, understand it, obey it. Everything. And then you said, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and messenger. As soon as you say that, all the teachings of Rasulullah becomes wajib on you for you to accept and for you to have no doubt in it. If you have doubt, then you don't believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you think Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa didn't teach it properly, then again your iman is gone because he didn't believe in his teaching. Yes, if you got doubt in any of the things what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or done, then your iman is not complete because you can't have doubt. Whatever Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and done, Allah Ta'ala stamped it and said, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radaytu lakum al islam adina. The Islam has been completed. And there is nothing remaining. Islam is not incomplete. If it was incomplete, Allah wouldn't have said, atmamtu lakum. Allah wouldn't have used this word. So Allah stamped it saying that Islam is complete. That means it's complete. You have to accept it and go ahead with it. You can't add anything from there, in there. You can't delete anything from there. Islam doesn't need any more information from you. Yes? And Islam also doesn't need anything for you to remove it. Everything what is needed, everything is there. This is one part of believing. Second, when you say believing in Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, the first part, that includes akhirah. That includes akhirah. That includes knowledge of ghaib. The unseen information which is protected for Allah Ta'ala. Yes, that includes al-ba'ath wa al-bi'atha. Al-ba'athu ba'd al-mawt. The life after death. That includes. That includes that Allah Ta'ala will be judged in the day of judgment and you all will answer in front of him. That includes life of death. Sorry, life after death in grave. That includes believing in death. So everything, whatever related in Iman, everything as soon as you said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, all in one. Done. In one sentence, all included. So which means you have accepted Allah is your Razzaq. Allah gives you food. If you say la ilaha illallah, but believe someone else gives you food, then your Iman is not complete. Yes, if you say la ilaha illallah, but you don't believe in Jannah. Or Jahannam, then Iman, is it complete or not complete? complete? Not complete. Because you have to believe in Jannah and Jahannam. Because Allah said in the Quran, do you see? So when you say, La ilaha illallah, every part of it, whatever needs believing, you have to believe it. Otherwise, your Iman is not complete. So here, every single person who believes 100% on everything, whatever needs believing, for them is good news. Not for incomplete Iman people. Next, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So after first part is complete, then they doing good deeds. For them is good news. Now who are those people doing good deeds? Good deeds can be many different types of good deeds. Prayer, 
We're praying five times a day. This is a good deed. Fasting in the month of Ramadan. This is good deed. Hajj and zakat and sadaqat. Charity is good deed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Even moving a rubbish from the road. That's also good deed. He says that's a branch of Islam. Yeah. He says. لِلْإِسْلَامِ سَبْعَةُ وَبِدْعُنْ What's the hadith? The, in, the, in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Islam has the 70 plus branches. Yeah, sorry. سَبْعُونَ وَبِدْعُنْ It's the 70 plus branches. And then he says وَآخِرُهَا إِمَاتَةُ الْأَذَاعَ عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ The last one is moving the rubbish from the road. So 70 plus branches means 70 plus ways of worshipping Allah Ta'ala. Yeah? So Allah Ta'ala we can worship in many different ways. And we need to find those from the hadith, from the sunnah. And from the life of sahaba. And from the life of tabi'een. These are the people who are the true teachers. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khairul Quruni Qarni. The best teachers of all time is my nation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُ And then best teachers of all time after the first nation and then whoever's coming is straight after them. Means the students of the first batch. Yes. And then he says ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُ And then after that the last batch, the next batch is the best of all teachers. What does that mean? Means you learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those people who were present around him. They're the top teachers. Second group of people, the Sahaba. Or higher tabi'een. Yes, Sahaba means those people saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And higher tabi'een means after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, they were born in, within a few days. Within first batch. They are second batch of people. Third batch, that those people learned from the Sahaba. Even if it's 100 years later after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are called tabi'een. So these three batches Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given guarantee to learn from them. See what they have done. If they have done anything, that is part of a'mal salihat That is part of good deeds. If they haven't done anything, stop it there. Leave it there. Don't add any more in Islam. So this is what called A'malu Salihat. We need to focus inshallah. And also, what I need to point at, yesterday I was saying in Bengali Tafsir, that sometimes we have some things in our culture. It's culturally done. It's not through Quran and Sunnah, by the way. It's culturally done. Because your elders told you, your daddy told you, your nanny told you, your grandma told you. And it's been seen as a good thing. Now when you see it, it's not in Quran and Sunnah best to avoid it. Best to stop it there. Superstitious things. Activities which have been known as good thing, but it's not part of Islam. Why do we stop it there? Because someone might think it's a sunnah. Someone might start giving respect to it and they start thinking it's a sunnah. And as soon as they start thinking the action is sunnah, that turns into bid'ah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if there is anything that I haven't done and you've added it in my religion, then you've done a bid'ah. Wa kullu bid'atin dalala. And every bid'ah is gumrah, is bad. Is on the wrong path. وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every wrongdoing goes to Jahannam. Or wrongdoer goes to Jahannam. So that's where we stop. And then in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if anyone adding anything which is not in our religion, then it is, it is rejected. In another hadith, he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if anyone adding anything in my religion, in my deen, then then he should make his place in Jahannam. He should make his seat in Jahannam. So again, a'malu salihat 
doesn't mean those things which is not in the Quran and Sunnah. And that's where we have to be flexible, brothers and sisters. If you're alim, if, if an alim, if a scholar saying to you, sister, this is not Islamic, then you should stop it there. For example, for example, a lot of people, especially Bangladeshi people, they have strong link with Hinduism. Why? Because we have a lot of Hindus around us. Am I right, Shah? Yes, yes. yes, India surrounding the Bangladesh. And even in Bangladesh itself, we have a lot of Hindu people. So now, sometimes we're growing up in the same village. Am I right, Shah? Within the same village, we have two, three different religions. But we're growing up together. We're going to each other's houses, sitting down, respecting each other. And even a Hindu lady, we're calling her aunt. Because we live in the same village, we call them Sasi and Khala and so on. Because we're growing up in the same town, same village, and we respect each other like we are, we are a family, we live together. In Eid, they're coming to our houses, in their parties, we're going over and then that's it. We're living like one family. So in that case, what happens? A lot of things from them passed on to our culture. But it can be vice versa. A lot of things they can take as well from us. They might like certain things and they might start following those as well. But a lot of things has come to Islam. For example, we see a lot of Hindu culture things in our weddings nowadays. In the Muslim families. Now if those things were has been added other than the teachings of Rasulullah, other than Sunnah of Rasulullah, whatever is there. If that doesn't get taken away and doesn't get removed by the scholars and the pious people of religion, then a time will come within 100 years you might see this thing taken as part of Sunnah. People will say, ah, if you don't do this, then wedding is not done. Wedding is not done because it's incomplete. Why? Because my father and forefathers, they all done it. So that's where we need to stop. Because that's where the fear of Allah comes and we need to stop things. Same way, the example what I was giving yesterday, I was giving example of taking candles to the graves. A lot of us, we know that there are, there are some people, they go to the graves, put a candle on, the burning candle. And that came from the Hindu culture, by the way. That's not Islamic. We don't see candles in the Prophet's grave, no. And they won't be able to do that. This government is very strict. If anyone goes there, panic, burns a candle next to a prophet's grave, they're going to go to prison straight away. Yeah, but we see this not in India alone or Bangladesh alone, but we see it in, in a lot of different countries as well. But this is not Islamic. None of the Sahaba done this. The burning candle to a grave of another Sahaba or putting a shawl of decorating the graves. Making it nice. No, that's not part of Islam. That's why Sahaba's grave in the Masjid al baqir what do we see? Plain land. Plain land, rocks and dust. So if there was something important to do on graves, then who deserves it most? Sahaba. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha deserves it most because she is the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see? So if there is some respect for the graves, then graves of the Sahaba, graves of the family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And where we don't see this, no Sahaba done this, no Tabi'een done this, no Tab'ud Tabi'een done this, no Salaf al Salihin done this, no A'imma, no Mujtahideen done this. And that's where we stop, we say no. Yes. Keeping the graveyard nice and clean, that's Sunnah. You should keep it clean. You should make it, you shouldn't make it scary looking, like bushy, forest looking. No. Graveyard, you keep it clean. You put nice plants. Prophet ﷺ was passing by, and then he took a tree, or he took a branch from the tree and put that next to the grave. And he said, as long as that tree is doing dikir, these people in the grave, they will remain safe. So what do we see? Yes, plant. Put nice plants. Make it nice looking. That's fine. Keep it clean. 
Yes. And then visit it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nahaytukum ani ziyara fazuruha. He said, I have stopped you once upon a time from visiting the graves, but now visit it. Why? Why did he stop it? And why does he allow them to visit it? He stopped it when he saw that they're doing the wrong things to the grave. He stopped it. He said, no, you are not allowed to visit the graves anymore because they cry very loud. They scream. They go on the floor, hug the, hug the floor and cry. And then so much more they do. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw their old culture. Then what did he do? He stopped. He said, no, don't visit the graves any, anymore. Then once he realized the Sahaba are in control of their emotion now, he said, Fazuru, go and visit it now. So that's where it comes in. So if you see your culture is becoming part of your religion, then you stop there and you say, no, that's a full stop. Because we don't mix with Islam and culture. Okay, inshallah. Islam says another one, one last example. Islam says mahar should be less. Mahar. Do you know mahar? Mahar of weddings should be less. Yes, should be less. Do you know why? So the marriages are easy. So the young women, men and women, they get married and they don't commit zina. But our culture said what? Culture says push it up. Our culture says push it up. Whoever the biggest murubi in the talk, he will say, Batiza, make it 10,000. And then everyone will say, Sasa is the biggest murubi here. And don't point to him. If he said it, go ahead. Manila Rebaba. Hmm? Manila Rebaba means, my dear son, accept it. But who's going to pay that 10,000? Sasa is going to pay it. Or the, the, the person who's saying, Manila Rebaba means, Dear son, accept it. Is he going to pay the 10,000? Or the son going to pay the 10,000? Whose headache? Son's headache. So whose family will break? Son's family will break. Son will divorce his wife. Because earning 10,000 is not an easy job. Some people need years for that. Yeah. So we have to be careful what we do in Islam and in the name of Islam. Everything we see is not Islam. And everything we are staying away is also is not like not Islam. It might be something part of Islam. So there are certain things we're missing which are part of Islam. We need to bring it and we need to start doing it. And there are certain things we are doing in the name of Islam. Then we need to remove it if it's not Islamic. Okay, inshallah. Now, Iman and A'mal comes together. Give the glad tidings and good news to those people who have the Iman. We understood what Iman is. And who are doing good deeds. We understood what good deeds, good deeds are. It says, That they will have Jannat, gardens of paradise. Gardens, plural, not one Jannah shed. Many Jannah, many paradise you will have for you. Allah will keep it ready for you. Yes? Tajrimin tahtihal anhar. The lake and rivers will flow underneath. Means you will have palaces and bungalows and mansions around these rivers and lakes. SubhanAllah. And you will have more than one palace, more than one man mansion. You will have many different places to go and stay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives example when he talks about Jannah. He says, the Jannah, the lowest person, the last person who will go to Jannah, his Jannah will be ten times bigger than this world. Ten times bigger than this world. Now imagine, those people praying five times, those people reading Quran, those people attending the Hadith session, Quran session, their Jannah will be how big. Imagine. I leave the calculation on you, brothers and sisters. You calculate your own Jannah and increase your good deeds so your Jannah becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, so Allah Ta'ala says, Kullama ruziqu minha min thamaratin rizqan. Every time they eat a rizq from there, every time they taste something from there, doesn't matter it's fruit or food or vegetable or drink, whatever they eat from there, they will say it tastes similar to what we ate before. 
Subhanallah means it's not going to be something odd or weird. It's not going to be tasteless. Something tasty. Allah Ta'ala will give you. وَأُوتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهَا And Allah Ta'ala will give you more and more, more similar to these things what you had already. Or what you have there, there will be more and more. So as, as much you walk, you see more different things there. As much you go in, you see more beautiful things there. More tasty things there. Subhanallah. That's how Allah Ta'ala has designed the Jannah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that Allah Ta'ala says about Jannah, He says, أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِي مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ That Allah Ta'ala has decorated the Jannah and prepared the Jannah with those things, مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ Those things eyes never seen. Your eyes never seen things like those. Subhanallah, you're probably thinking, will I have a roasted camel? That's too small for Allah. Yeah, you will get millions of roasted camel in one go if you need. In the Quran, he says, "Ma tashtahihi al-anfusu wa taladhu al-ayyunu." That everything what you need, what your heart desires, is there. Subhanallah. Everything in Jannah. So this is the beauty of Jannah. Ma la aynun raat what your eyes never seen, wa la udunun samiat what your ears never heard. No one have described any restaurant so well like Jannah. No one have ever described any holiday place so well like Jannah. Jannah is better than every other part of this world. Everything. From here, you're probably looking at looking on internet and looking at beautiful place and you're thinking, I wish I was there. I desire to be there once even in my life. Even if it's one day. But imagine. Allah is saying Jannah is a million times better than everything was in this world. Subhanallah. So wish for Jannah, brothers and sisters, youngsters as well. Wish for Jannah and ask Allah every time when you ask dua, say to Allah, Allah, I want Jannah to be those. Can you all say this? Oh Allah, I want what? Jannah to be those. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when you ask for Jannah, ask for the highest one. Never say, oh Allah, give me the lowest one. No. That's you been too stingy with Allah. Allah wants to give you, so be generous when you're asking. Say to Allah, Allah, I want the biggest Jannah. I want the highest Jannah. Can we do this, inshallah? Create a friendship with Allah. So Rasulullah, sorry, Quran says, Allah Ta'ala will give them pure wives, clean wives, untouched wives, who haven't thought of committing sin. Who never, never, who never understood what is a sin. Forget thinking of sin. They don't even know what is sin. Forget even going towards it. These people are so pure. Allah Ta'ala made them for you only. In the Quran, it says, فِيهِنَّ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ that Allah Ta'ala will provide you such a woman that those whose gaze will be down, means eyes will be down, looking down, they're never going to look at you in a rude way, they're never going to get angry at you, they're never going to be mispleased on you, uh, upset on you, they always will be pleased and happy with you, and such a woman that they've never been touched by any jinn or human before. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Like they are the Yaqut and Marjan. Allah Ta'ala gives, gives example of them like diamonds. They're like diamonds. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when you look at them, you will see the veins running inside their bodies. They will be so pretty, so beautiful. When you look at them, you will forget everything else. Subhanallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says if they show a little bit light of their body, little bit nur from their body, he says, at ma samawati wal -awm. that everything what's in between the earth and the sky will be bright. And you wouldn't need the sunlight anymore. Or you wouldn't need the moon anymore. The world will remain bright forever. Just once one glance of their body comes to the earth. Subhanallah. That everything will be sweet. 
that the air will be will be giving nice fragrance the whole world the smell will be nice smell just because once they show little bit of their body to the world Allah Ta'ala kept them special hidden for the good people only those who believe purely for Allah sincerely for Allah and those who do good deeds purely and sincerely for Allah Ta'ala are we all ready to do our good deeds properly, inshallah? Then we will enjoy the beauty of Jannah, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala says, وَهُمْ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ How long is that holiday going to be? From UK, when you make your holiday to the holiday places, how long do you stay? Temporary. Temporarily. That's it. How long? Maximum 10 days, 2 weeks? One month. Yeah. That's rare as well. One month is rare. Unless it's your homeland. Yeah, otherwise it's two weeks, isn't it? Turkey, Egypt, Morocco, two weeks. That's it, you will come back. Because you go work and everything. Plus the cost, you have to understand it's going to cost a lot. Yeah. But in Jannah, how long will you stay? How long do you want to stay? Yeah? Forever? Allah Ta'ala says, You will stay there forever. You will stay there forever, you don't need visa. You don't need to renew in your visa. You don't need to go to the embassy to get a stamp. Because your stamp is As-Salatu Miftahun Jannah. Your key for Jannah is Salah. So you pray your Salah, you got the key. So brothers and elders, pray your Salahs properly. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَسَبُ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الصَّلَاةِ The first question will be asked in the day of judgment is your prayer. So pray your prayers on time. Pray your Fajr on time. Fajr coming earlier, isn't it? Fajr coming earlier. And it's hard to wake up now. It's hard to wake up. When it was 7 o'clock, you all woke up. You all prayed. But once it came to 5.45, now you think, oh no, it's getting earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. It's going to go all the way to 4 o'clock or probably 3.45. Yeah? But don't miss your Fajr. Because your Fajr is the key to Jannah. Your Zuhar is key to Jannah. Your Asr is key to Jannah. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, Hafizu ala salawati wa salati wusta. Look after your prayers and especially the Asr prayer. Wusta. A lot of Mufassirun, they translate it as Wusta as Asr. Asr prayer. Because Asr prayer we miss it a lot. We miss it because of school work. Because of lots of other, other responsibilities. And some of us we delay so much. We just pray just before Maghrib. No, we shouldn't do that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah Ta'ala is upset on those people. Those who delay their prayers because of laziness. And then once the time comes to the close to the end. They just... Hit the ground like birds picking up rice from the ground. Means they just do this. They just hit the ground like the birds hits the beak on the ground to pick up the rice. Means they're not praying properly. They're just rushing and hitting their head on the ground. Prophet he was upset and he said that. He's not praising. So pray your prayers on time. Pray your Maghrib on time. Pray your Isha on time. On top of that, if we can pray your tahajjud, pray it as well. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to pray for tahajjud. Pray tahajjud and he is to encourage people for to pray tahajjud. So pray those inshallah. Then inshallah Allah will bless you with highest jannah. May Allah make us amongst those people. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Next ayah Allah Ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yastahyi an yadriba madha lamma ba'udatan fama fawqaha. Allah Ta'ala doesn't feel shy in giving examples of a mosquito or anything smaller than that. What does that mean? Means Allah Ta'ala is giving example of dunya like a mosquito. The dunya's example, the world's example is like a mosquito. Means how much does a mosquito cost? How much does a mosquito cost, Chef? Penny? Or nothing? Nothing, it doesn't cost anything. Mosquito doesn't cost anything. Yeah, it's not even worth of a penny or worth of a cent. Yeah, it's not even worth of a cent. So Allah Ta'ala is giving an example of dunya that dunya doesn't have now no worth. Nothing. 
The world where you're living and you're thinking, this is my home, this is my everything, this is what I desire, this is where I want to live forever, Allah Ta'ala says, that's nothing. And another place Allah Ta'ala gives example of Zubab. Again, Mufassirun explain, they say that Allah Ta'ala is giving example of dunya with the Zubab. Zubab means fly. And in another place, Allah Ta'ala says, Ankabut, the mosquito, the, 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 the spider. Mufassirun, they say, Allah Ta'ala is giving example of the world with the spider. Kamathal al Ankabut. It's like the world is like the house of a spider. How strong is a spider's house? Very strong, isn't it? It doesn't break. No, it breaks. If it's a big, big fly, comes, it goes through. It breaks the net. It breaks the web. Isn't it? So it shows how weak the house is. Allah Ta'ala gives example of dunya with the spider's house, spider's web. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لَوْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعْدُلُ جَنَاحَ بَعُوبَةٍ That if the world was worth of a wing of a mosquito, Allah Ta'ala would not have given a, given a drop of water to the disbelievers. Allah Ta'ala wouldn't have given a, a drop of water to the disbelievers. What does that mean? The world doesn't mean anything in the eye of Allah. The world doesn't mean anything. As long as the believing people in there, the world has worth. Otherwise, as soon as the, all the believing people go, Allah Ta'ala will destroy the earth. يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَفْتُوشِ وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ The mountains will break, land will break, sky will break, everything will become powder and fly around. That's it. Everything will turn into dust. So this world doesn't have no value. So if from this sentence Allah Ta'ala showing all people connect with Allah before it's too late. Connect with Allah before it's too late. Make your friendship with Allah before it's too late. Forgive. Ask for forgiveness of Allah Ta'ala before it's too late. Do the tawbah before it's too late. إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حكيما. Allah Ta'ala says, Tawbah is for those people, those who do mistake by mistake. لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ Mistake by mistake means you've done something unknowingly. You've done something accidentally. That's a mistake. And what do they do? يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ They repent. As soon as they realize, they say to Allah, Allah, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do this. Please forgive me. They say to Allah, Allah, forgive me. Allah says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah Ta'ala will forgive them. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Allah Ta'ala is most knowledgeable and most wise. Next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنَ وَلَلَّذِينَ يَمُتُونَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ أُولَ I'm, I'm, here because I'm, really I'm still young. I'm not old yet. So I still got more time. Let's delay it. Let's delay the process. Let's delay the process. I will do Tawbah when I become 30. I will do Tawbah when I become 40. I will do Tawbah when I become 50. I will do Tawbah when I become 60. I will do Tawbah when I become 70. Allah Ta'ala is giving him time, 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 time. But he's taking advantage now. He's taking advantage. When he was 30, he says, when I become 40 and I start praying, Allah giving him 10 more years. Now still he doesn't start. He still he doesn't pray. He still is thinking he's going to get more time. He's making in, inside, he's saying inside, when I become 50, I'll start praying. When my beard goes white, I'll start praying. Allah Ta'ala is giving him chance. But still he doesn't change. Allah says, Tawbah to Tawbah is not for those people, those who continue doing bad deeds. Continue doing bad deeds. لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَلَيْسِ تَتَوَّدُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ And he carries on doing the bad deeds until death comes to him. He doesn't stop. So when do we need to stop, brothers? So we need to stop here and make intention that after today no more sins.
After today, we need to connect ourselves with Allah, inshallah. Say inshallah. May Allah accept us. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So after today, we need to connect ourselves with Allah because we don't know when we're going to die. Yeah? That's why we need to know the world and everything in world is nothing. It's all a deception. Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعٌ غُرُورٌ The everything in the dunya Allah Ta'ala created as a deception. That's not real. The real is hereafter. Way after you die and you will see everything that's forever, permanent. You will get a house, no hammers will break it. You will get a house, no hammer will break it. You will get a car, nothing will destroy it. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You will eat food which never will poison you or never will harm you. Subhanallah. So everything over there, Allah Ta'ala made it permanent for you. The enjoyment is permanent. You're not going to get bored of it. Here in this dunya, if you eat one food, two days, you get bored. You said, isn't there something different today? Isn't there some different curry today? Do we or do we don't? We do. We ask our wife. We say, isn't there something different today? But over there, you're going to eat every day different food. And you're never going to get bored of it. Every taste will be different. Every bite will be different. Every fruit will be different. SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala has designed that life for enjoyment. So be ready for it. And don't go after the dunya. Then he says, Those who believe in Allah, as soon as Quran comes down, they know it's from Allah. They accept it straight away. They believe it. And they go ahead with the instruction. But on the other hand, there is another group of people. What do they do? Those who disbelieve in Allah, they say, what does Allah want to say with this? What is Allah trying to say with this example? Means they doubt the Quran. They disagree with the Quran. So from here, Allah Ta'ala is trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that as soon as Quran comes in front of you, do not doubt it. Do not question it unless you are sincerely want to understand it, then question. Otherwise, don't question it. If you have little bit, slightest doubt in your brain, in your, in your head, your Iman is gone. Slightest doubt on the Quran, your Iman is gone. So don't doubt it. Don't question it. What is Allah trying to say with it? Accept it, whatever Allah said. Go ahead. And then... Allah Ta'ala says, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا Allah Ta'ala guides a lot of people with Qur'an. And Allah Ta'ala misguides a lot of people with Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala guides a lot of people with Qur'an and Allah Ta'ala misguides a lot of people with Qur'an. How? Allah Ta'ala guided the Sahaba. They had the Qur'an, they accepted it, they were guided. On the other hand, the enemies of Sahaba, they had the Qur'an as well, but they got what? Allah Ta'ala cursed them. Tabbat yada abi lahabim watam. Yeah. Rasulullah says cursed them. Allah Ta'ala destroyed them. What happened? So both group, they received the Quran, they had the Quran, they had them from the mouth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Hidayah came to one group and Hidayah didn't come to another group. And then Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ That Allah Ta'ala only takes people to the wrong path through the Qur'an and with the Qur'an is the Fasiqun. Fasiq is the one who goes to the wrong path even though he studies the Qur'an. Why? And yesterday I was saying, why didn't Allah mention وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْكَافِرِينَ or وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْمُشْرِكِينَ Why didn't Allah say that Allah only misguides people who are mushrik? Or Allah only misguide people with the Qur'an who are kafir, who are disbeliever. He didn't say that. He said fasir. What does that mean? Means if your heart is not clean for Qur'an, if you're still committing sins, if you're still not ready to accept the Qur'anic commandments and teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you haven't purified yourself and you didn't make yourself ready for the Qur'an. Yes, you didn't make yourself ready for the Qur'an. And until you didn't make yourself ready for the Qur'an, you can be misguided by looking at certain sentences. And you might take wrong meaning, and from that you might end up going to the wrong path. So you have to be very careful. 
So if we say study Quran, read Quran, read Tafsir, but be very careful. Always stay under the guidance of ulama. Always stay under the teachings of the scholars. Okay, inshallah, always have good relation with the imams. Good relation with the, with the, with the ulama. If you find something difficult or something that you're not understanding, always take it to the ulama without you having your own translation and interpretation. Be very careful. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a lot of people, they'll go to Jahannam because of the tongue. So you, if you start interpreting it in your own way and that goes wrong, then you have to make yourself in Jahannam. Be very careful. So Quran is something Allah Ta'ala has given as hidayah. Always be polite, humble and always make dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always say, he used to make dua. He used to say to Allah, Allahumma allimni ma yanfa'uni. Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamdani wa allimni ma yanfa'uni. Wa Allah, whatever you have taught me, benefit me from that knowledge. And give me the beneficial knowledge, he used to say. In another dua, he used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbala. Wa Allah, I ask for knowledge which benefits me, beneficial knowledge. And I ask for food which is pure. And I ask for a'mal which is accepted by you. So that's we need to ask as well. Every time we sit down with the Quran, we should sit down with the pure intention. And I also was giving an example of Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari wrote the hadith book, isn't it? Bukhari. How long did it take? How many years he took? 16 years. The book is not that big. It's only this big. One volume. It doesn't have 100 volumes. One volume, one book he wrote, but took 16 years. Do we know what he did before every hadith? Before every hadith, he used to do full istikhara. Full research on the chain. Then istikhara. Then praying two rak'at with the fresh wudu, then he is to write the hadith. Subhanallah. If this much concentration was given to the hadith, then why wouldn't the hadith be accepted in the world? It's the heart what made it important, made the book so valuable. It's because of his heart, because of his ikhlas, because of his sincerity, because of, because of his devotion, khushu' and khudu for Allah Ta'ala. Because he was so sincere in the word, Allah Ta'ala accepted it so well. Now every single person talks about his books, his book. Isn't it? So you also, when you do the work, you have to clear your inside. Purify your heart and then learn the Quran. Then Allah Ta'ala will benefit you and benefit your children. And also I was saying yesterday, that lots of us, we want our children to become hafiz of Quran. But we don't have Quran in our life. Just briefly I'm telling, it's going to be impossible. Your child might become Hafiz, might lead to Rakat in Shafran Masjid, and you might take a few videos and put it on Facebook and YouTube, but that will be the end of the story. That will be the end of the story, because you will not have him a Hafiz in real life. He'll change, because of intention wasn't good. Ikhlas wasn't there. Sincerity wasn't there. So when you make a Hafiz before you make intention, Pray to Allah to rakat. Istikhara, make dua to Allah. Say to Allah, Allah, I want to make my Muhammad a hafiz of Quran. Can you please accept him? And make this dua every day after every prayer. Say to Allah, Allah, make my Muhammad hafiz of Quran. Or make my Fatima hafiz of Quran. Make this dua every day until your death. Until you die, make this dua. And as soon as he finished, if you give up, that's it, he will give up as well. You don't miss your prayers. You don't miss your Quran. You be a good person. You follow the Quran. You become a living example of Quran. Then your son will find easy to memorize the Quran. Then Allah Ta'ala will bless him with the beauty of Quran. So before we make our children ulamas of deen, we have to change ourselves, my brothers and sisters. We have to bring the environment for them. Make the environment for them. So after they graduate from the hips, they don't find drugs outside. They find the Qur'an is outside. 
Once they find the Quran is outside, they will mingle with the Quran is only. Am I right? And if they find druggies, then they will mingle with druggies. Then Prophet said in the hadith, he said, if you sit down in the, in the, you know, the metal, metal burners, blacksmiths, if you sit down in the blacksmith shop, if you don't even work in it, still you will have smoke, uh, smell of smoke on your body. If you don't even take drugs, but you will have the attitude of druggies in you, behavior of druggies in you. Am I right? And he says, if you sit down in the in the actor shop, in the perfume shop, and the person doesn't even give you one drop of perfume, still you will have some smell of perfume in you. So if you make the environment surrounding good, then if your child doesn't even become happy, he just memorized five paras, ten paras, five surahs, and then because of his memory he gave up, or because of GCSE and A-levels he gave up, but still he will remain on a good environment because your environment is good. Do you see? So from this hadith, what does he want to teach us? He's trying to teach you that turn your community into a perfume shop. Watch your children will have smell of deen in them. Fragrance of deen in them. Even though if they are not hafiz. All the sahaba weren't hafiz. Were all the sahaba hafiz? Yeah, what were they? But Prophet was given guarantee of jannah for them. He guaranteed all of them jannati. All the sahabas are jannati. And he guaranteed, he said, all my sahabas are like stars. All my sahabas are guidance. Follow any one of them, you'll go Jannah. That's why he said, he guaranteed that. He said, follow any of my sahaba, you'll go Jannah. Subhanallah. Can we guarantee our community people and say, follow anyone from my community and you will go Jannah. Can we do that? He would say, brother, I don't have uh, satisfaction about myself. How can I get satisfied about others? So we need to sort our community, okay, inshallah. We need to have the love of Quran in our hearts. Then we will see, inshallah, there is a change in us. May Allah Ta'ala make us the, 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 the lovers of Quran. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. One last verse. Can I do one last verse? In, I'll finish in two, three minutes, inshallah. الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَى وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْقَاسِرُونَ Now he said that Allah Ta'ala misguides the fasiq with the Qur'an. Now who are those fasiq? We need to know that, isn't it? Allah Ta'ala is explaining fasiq. He says fasiq is the one الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ Means after he put the Iman, he promised that he's going to fulfill the commands of Allah. But he breaks it. He doesn't fast when the Ramadan comes. He doesn't give zakat when zakat time comes. He doesn't go to masjid when it's time for prayer. He doesn't pray his prayer. Forget going to masjid, he doesn't even pray. Allah Ta'ala says, these are fasting. Because he made a promise with Allah, made a covenant with Allah and breaking his covenant. Breaking his promises. So this is a fasiq. So don't be on the list of fasiq, inshallah, brothers and sisters. As soon as you brought Iman, sisters, you promised with Allah that you're going to fulfill the commands of Allah. And one of the commands of Allah is wearing hijab, covering yourself. And that promise shouldn't break. And if it breaks, then we will fall under this word. Yes, as soon as we brought Iman, we promised that we're not going to steal. We're not going to lie. We're not going to cheat. We're not going to backbite. We're not going to gossip. We're not going to spy on others. These are all commands of Quran, by the way. So anything and everything in the Quran, you've accepted it. These are Allah's promises. And you've accepted it. You said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God but, but Allah. Means I have accepted everything what Allah Ta'ala said and I will obey it. In another word. Now, if you don't obey it, Allah Ta'ala says, These are fasid. Alladhina yamkuduna ahad Allah ima adhimizam. وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا عَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا يُصَلْ The second group of fasiq, those who disconnect themselves from their family, from their blood relations. They disconnect themselves from their parents, from their siblings, from their brothers, from their sisters, from their cousins, and so on. Prophet wasallam says that if anyone wants to have more rizq, أَيَّبْسُدَ لَهُ رِزْقَهُ if anyone wants more rizq, then he should have good relation with his relatives. فَلْيَسِلْ رَحِمَةً He should have good relation. And then in another hadith he says that لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ الْقَاطِعِ 
that a person who cuts the relation with their family members, it doesn't go to Jannah. So we hear, we understood what is fasting. So a person who doesn't keep good relation with their brothers, sisters, siblings, cousins, and relatives, this is a fasting. So we don't want to be in, in, included in that group, inshallah. Say inshallah. We don't want to be part of those. And the last one, what you've seen on the earth, and those people who spread corruption on earth, whatever way, by swearing, by stealing, by fighting, by cursing, by discriminating, whatever way they're spreading corruption on land, Allah Ta'ala says these are fasid. These are bad people. So they're not going to get hidayah through Quran. So they have to stop those bad things for, for them to get hidayah. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Ula'ika humul khasirun. Those fasid has been mentioned in three different groups. They are all losers. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from being losers and may Allah Ta'ala make us all amongst the successful one. Jazakumullah khairan. We'll stop here, inshallah. We'll finish our tafsir here on Ayah 27. And next lesson, I will do it from Ayah 28 onwards, inshallah. Please join the halaqah and encourage others to come and join, inshallah. Bring more brothers and sisters to attend the halaqah. And remember, there is more barakah when you listen to the halaqah directly face to face rather than on YouTube and Facebook. So I know a lot of brothers and sisters, they're listening from YouTube and Facebook. But please come and join live halaqa where you can ask me questions face to face, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. We finish here. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, ilazim. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi, gana shadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Is there any question? Anyone has any question?